this is our last meeting of the year. And today we have two future readers for you. We're going to start off with uh, Christine Homer. And I'm going to introduce her to you right now. Christine Homer first published a collection of her long form poetry, Stranger in the House, Devious Publishing, San Ramon, in 2014. By that time, having joined Jerry Ball's bookstore haiku group, her focus had changed. A longtime member of the Yuki Teki Haiku Society, her haiku appear in the Manchini Haiku in English Annual Se Selection each year from 2015 through 2020, and grew in Metz Haiku 2016 and shortlisted on the Touchstone Awards 2020. She is a retired pediatric host and anesthesia nurse, now living in Walnut Creek, California. And here's Christine. Gary for the introduction. And thank you, HPNC, for having me. Uh, this is a very specific honor. I am delighted to be invited. Um, I am particularly indebted to um, Patricia Mockmiller for a lot of very patient hand carrying <laughs> in Yuki Teiki um, to bring me to a point that you would do this invitation for me. And I would also like to uh, thank um, Betty Arnold, who was my first GEPO editor and who helped me in the selection of some of the haiku that I'm going to read today. Um, and Susan Antolin. Um, Susan, right now, about now, I'm hoping you have completely forgotten what a quibbling nitpicker I was <laughs> once long ago when you so graciously offered to help me edit some badly needed uh, editing haiku. <laughs> but at any rate, um, I wanted to give you just a little background before I start the reading uh, because I came to haiku late. Um, I started out uh, at the other end and grew up very close to nature. Um, my father and my grandfather were both hunting partners and, in the 40s, in the time when what you bagged came home to the table, or at least a commercial locker that you rented or something so that you, it could eventually get to your table. But uh, I, it, because of that, uh, I learned uh, early a reverence and re a respect for nature um, and additionally responsibility for it because uh, money funds were taken from uh, all the hunting and fishing licenses sold and used to buy and preserve natural lands and natural beasts, the herds and flocks. Uh, and spiders and all species uh, that come with land. In um, later time when I was uh, married and so forth, I also lived pretty close to nature. Uh, we had a big old rambling house in Berkeley, the house my husband had grown up in, in fact. And um, we lived, we shared this house with uh, Mexican free tail bats. They came annually. Uh, we were waiting for them uh, that when they would arrive and they would stay in our attic mostly. Uh, sometimes they would come down a chimney and horrify visitors and guests, but we all knew in the house what to do and how to help them find an open window and bring them down to the right level where they could escape. So. Um, as to the children were gone, um, I moved, my husband and I moved out to Contra Costa County. And uh, here is where I found training as a naturalist interpreter and handler, uh, taking non-releasable hawks and owls and falcons uh, on the glove. Uh, to the public uh, in, in various types of events and to children in classrooms in five different school districts. This was for me, a, my, a, my privilege and a passion. Um, it was about this time that I began sending um, a haiku or two to a um, 
to the Contra Costa Times, there was a an animal advice column, and there were haiku printed in it. And I thought, okay, I'll I know what haiku are. <laughs> I'll write a haiku, and my haiku was published. And it turns out that the other person who was contributing to this haiku uh, art column, I mean, to this animal column, was Jerry Ball. So you can see where this is going. Uh, ultimately. Jerry invited me um, to he'd be a part of his uh, bookstore haiku group. And uh, this magically changed my focus literally forever. Um, he introduced me to Yuki Teiki. Uh, he took me to HPNC. My first autumn, two autumns reading, I think, was um, I remember uh, that uh, Donald and Chase spoke. I don't remember the year. <laughs> But uh, that brings you up to date on my my journey to haiku, so to speak. And um, the uh, the rest of it now will just move on to the reading if everybody's ready. Uh, first of all, as a good beginning, haiku read out loud, the wine taster's nose in the glass. Wellspring, the mandolin in my DNA. Cicadas hammer the window pane my embattled dreams. Bus stop, the conversation fiddles with loose change. Budding surf, a restlessness among beached walruses. Lemonade, too much sugar bends the light. Useless breeze, the last beetle chewed pine through the chipper. Ancient wisteria, all the new growth winds counterclockwise. I have to interrupt and tell you that this is a late edition offered in response to your yesterday's workshop, Patricia, uh, on emphasizing meaning uh, by marrying content and form. Uh, it was a marvelous workshop. And this happened late to, and I squeezed it right in. So moving right along. Morning fog, somewhere a woodpecker lays his bet. Salmon run the easy deep water, a lifetime behind. Canyon trail, my sweat and the mules run together. Trout stream, my father's only son is his only daughter. Winter solace, threaded in the hem of his vest, words of the Torah. First ray of sun, each drop of dew holds its own rainbow.
rosary beads. Dairy cows in line swing home, their hopeful udders. Smoke in the air, sweet talking my way into the hive. Farmer's market, the seller's fleshy arms with peach fuzz. Under her Stetson, long stemmed Texas grass gone to seed. Wildfire, the stable latches too hot to touch. Snow upon snow, the blackbirds call through airport glass. Tango, his hand on the rib, God stole. Launch blast, the brittleness of bird bone. Each snowflake, unlike any other, seven granddaughters. Phosphorescence, she tries to explain to grandpa her love of flying. Third world, in the antique porch lantern, a halogen bulb. Her final say, coffee beans rattle into the grinder. Next one's a monoku. Grandfather's toy soldiers, pure lead. Clutter, but just until I get rid of it. Ongoing drought. The eaves release the rain chain. And last, handmade arrowhead. All the little nicks that shape us. Thank you.